Okay, 10 minutes, and then I'll wash my hair. Uh, anyway, it sucks. Like so I wonder what happened with that from those posts. So I'm just curious to find something like this. I mean, the only thing that I care about with this sidekick to Silent Bob Jasm, or no, it's the Seinfeld thing. <laughs> you just can't do anything. You don't know no. when you're when you're being filmed. And it'll be more fun because you two will be. Yeah, I have to figure that oh, out. <laughs> yeah, you can help me extract absolute shit. I am so sorry. I, it is out of my control. In Sydney, because I was seeing lies, they decided to release it at Christmas and not. Lewis, what's going on? Kick us out in 30 days, not 90. No, that's took that job. have made it. I'm having real life buyer's regret. Like, now I feel like I should have got a yellow rug. Like something yellow to go over this. Or maybe I'll just find like a really cool yellow lamp. But I really want some yellow. All right. Here are our new pillowcases. Low key, I think I'm gonna just put them right on top of the ones that are already on them. Let me just see. Let me see it, let me see it, let me see it, then oh, let me see it. I'm glad I went with the 16 by 16, not that 14 by 14. I know that. Yes, I should take the the old um, pillowcase off, but I think it just gives the pillow more stuffing. It's crazy what a pop of pink will do to a room. I think every room needs a little pop of pink, seriously. I am gonna disinfect these, by the way. But I just wanna see what they look like. What it look like. Mm, 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 mm. What it do, what it do. Cute. I need more pillows. I'm gonna get it. So cute, yeah. Love that. Yeah, more and more, I'm just like, why did I get a brown rug? Like, why did I get brown? Hopefully the shape like makes it a little less bleh, but brown is really not speaking to me right now. And it's also just like, I feel like it's the wrong brown. I hate when I do shit like this. Let me see if the man ever responds to my message because he had another rug I was trying to get because it's the same seller. Here you go. Yes, we can do that. See, now you done pissed me off. Hi. Okay, thank you. I think we got different time zones. I just, the whole thing is that like I wanted a warm color because I feel like this lavender rug is too cool for this room. Even though I think that that was something I was feeling because there was less sunlight because it was winter time. And now that the sun, the summer is here, I'm getting a lot of sunlight and actually the lavender doesn't look too bad in here because I have all this golden, yellow, warm light in the room. But the shade of brown of the rug, at least online, it looks cool. Like it also has a cool tone to it. It doesn't have a warm tone to it. Like, 
the chocolate parts of it are warm. You see like the little lining, but overall it's a cool toned rug. And that sale, they was lying on that sale because everything's back on sale. Why they trying to act? If you want to act, you can keep yourself where you at. Three, six, nine, that go fun. Is it time to suck it to me one more time? Get along, get along. <laughs> Yeah, like this is cute. Making this thing go well. Yes, we getting back into my colorful era. Day is cute. Now, now, day is cute. But who got two hundred fifty dollars? Now, does somebody got two hundred fifty dollars? All I need is two hundred fifty dollars. Oh, let me um. Let me, to you, in, in the back of the room, actually, let me say something to you because I saw you commenting on my last YouTube video talking about something. Okay, maybe if you told him that you only wanted to be friends, then why do you feel away about him not hitting you up on Valentine's Day? I don't feel away. I thought I was talking to the girls. I thought I was talking to the girls. I thought I was venting about niggas bumping their gums, even the niggas that we don't want, bumping their gums about how they want our time and want to date us, yet and still fumble opportunities to do the very thing they say they want to do, regardless of what I told him. I was talking to y'all. I thought we was here with it. You supposed to be one of the girls. I need you to snap into it. It's time to snap into it. Please know where you are when you enter in this space. This is a girl's room, okay? Either get it or you damn don't, and if you don't get it, for real. I'm not about to play with y'all, seriously. I don't know when it cut off, but I'm gonna go to the Balloon Museum tomorrow with my friend and her son, and then tomorrow night, I'm going to my friend's family's house for dinner. And what else is this week? Oh, yeah, while y'all all up in it, that same boy who didn't call me for Valentine's Day on my phone right now sent me a long four-page letter talking about how he really wants me to take him seriously. It's like, that's what I was getting at. This is somebody who is persistent with letting me know that they want to be my man, that they see me as their woman. That type of person, regardless of how I feel about them, how I feel about them is how I feel about them. But that type of person, you don't not hit that bitch up on Valentine's Day. That was just supposed to be a little inside between you and me. Don't piss me off again. No, 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 I'm just, that's what you need, a good whoop. Closed hand, closed fist. I did move that plant right there because I realized that this whole time I've had this big ass mirror, I've never had it just like, I've never had the full mirror available for me to look through. It's always been covered up to about right here because the plant is so big. And so it was just nice and refreshing to see this big mirror i could just see way more of the room and uh i put this there for now i'm not gonna keep that there i feel like if i do keep this set up like this i'll probably put a light fixture right here but yeah like all in cords and stuff like i don't like that being exposed but yeah you know almost three years living here and i'm still like decorating that's life that's gonna happen, especially when you're starting from scratch, which I essentially started from scratch. All of this stuff is new. None of this is from New York. So yeah, proud of myself. It's a real life boogie and a real life hold down. Don't be a bitch girl, take it to the flow now, woo! All right, I'll see y'all later, bye. Okay. Grabbing all earrings. I'm over here trying to figure out my accessories. Do we want a little pearl necklace? Are we giving fuck boy today or no? It is cute. It's more, whoa. More than what I'd like to wear. I was thinking of going just small little dainty necklace. If I can find it, oh here it is. I was thinking of just doing small little dainty necklace. So just, let me see if I can put both on. Is it backwards or is this the right way? No, that's the right way. Yeah. 
I don't know if I'm keeping this on. We gonna see. Let's put everything else on. I do wish that I had more ear holes. I have four on each ear, three on the lobe, and then one in my tragus, and one in the conch. And uh, I never changed these earrings out. Like this is the earring that I got it pierced with. And I do want another earring because this bar is like really long and it gets on my nerves. And so I, I wouldn't mind getting another earring for this. I be looking at like those diamond hoops that like wrap all the way around. I really like that. So that's like a big girl purchase I'll make when I get some bigger money. Cause right now it's giving little bitty bitch, little bitty 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 bitch, little bitty 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 little bitty bitch, little bitty 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 little bitty. Can I say, you know? Okay, the pearl necklace is getting on my nerves. Like, I get it, and I would like it for somebody else, but para mi, I'm just not there anymore where I want, like, a loud neckline. I used to be a necklace girl. Like, I would wear literally 10 necklaces at a time, just like stacked up all on top of each other. And it was a moment, you know what I'm saying? It was a moment during that time. But now it's just, like I'm gonna be wearing a whole bunch of fake jewelry. That's really what it's about. but it's not sturdy. But I think it's cute. Like what I wanna put right here, this long haul is a console table. And we talked about this, but I want like a cute console table with, and I want a big piece of artwork, either two big pieces or one big piece of artwork. And I'm just not in a rush. And you know, I be going through this thing too, where I be like, oh, I don't think I'm extending my lease, so like, why am I buying stuff to fill this space? I go through that a lot of just like, don't, don't do it. You know, I go back and forth all the time because I'm just like, you don't plan on extending your lease here, but you never know what could happen. I said that last year and I extended my lease. So I'm here for another 365 days. So I don't want to be making decisions on some future shit. I should just make decisions for right now. Yeah, I still wanna figure out where I wanna put the artwork that I got from my grandma. <sighs> I just don't know where I wanna put it. I don't know where I would wanna see it every day. Huh, just thought about something. Maybe you can go back there. I kind of like that. No, no, kinda like that. Like if I put it in this space right here, it just sat right there. Yeah. All right, I got a little second. Let me see if I'm gonna put that artwork right there. Hold on. Dig it, 
Let me see before you say something. Shut the hell up. Like, girl, please shut up. What the fuck do you know? Let me see, girl. Please shut up. No, please. I do not hate it. What I don't love is that it's not centered. So let me see. Maybe I'd have to. Dang. The right piece right there it would actually be tough. I'm not mad at that one being right there though. I'm just, the size of it doesn't really go. Let me see. I'm hungry, I can't tell you that. Okay, hold on, let me see. Maybe I just need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe all it takes is, ah. <clears throat> So not mad at that, it's not even funny. And I'm gonna keep it there for a little bit so I can see, like, I'm gonna just let it marinate. Sometimes you gotta let stuff marinate. Had to do the same thing with this. Let it marinate, I'm okay with it right here. You know what I'm saying? Let's just see. Let me give it a second. We gonna see. Okay, girls, see ya. I'll see y'all later, bye. Hey, girls, I'm going on a major not buying anything else spree because enough is enough. Everything I bought today, I really enjoyed it. But it's just like, I don't need anything. Jean skirt that I'd wear low rise. This is a size 10. I wear a size six, okay? But H&M, their sizing is all off. And I'm also still trying to decide. I bought them so I can have them and still decide on them. But they could be going back. This. Future self shirt, I'm going to cut into either a baby tee or a muscle tee. I'm thinking muscle tee. Um, so there's that. I didn't pay attention to the pricing of this one. I just saw how much it was. $17, not worth $17. Seriously. Um, I found this cute ass skirt on sale. It's just a gray knit skirt. I might wear this tomorrow. Long knit skirt. Fits really cute on the butt. It's this like wool material. Very cute. And I like that it can cross seasons. And then I found this two piece set. Also an option for tomorrow. I like that. The thing is, is that I don't know what shoes I wear with this. Actually, I do. I do have a shoe. I don't know what jacket. Um, this came with a skirt and it's this kind of material. And then I just found some really cute shorts that would be cute with like an oversized t-shirt where you just see, where's the front? Oh yeah, where you just see the print of the shorts, like a little bit of the print of the shorts. It looked really good on the butt. So I was like, I'm gonna get these. They was on sale. So, bought those. One thing about me, I'm one of those idiots that get caught up because it's a sale. I'm one of those. Definitely get caught up. Uh, I had a great time at the museum. After the museum, I met up with some friends. The museum was really cute though. Definitely more like family oriented. And because I was with my friend and her son, I didn't get as many pictures and videos as I would have liked to. Like, I don't wanna impede on his memory of this museum, so I wasn't like asking for pictures and videos. I kinda was just like enjoying it. I did get pictures, I did get some video, but not what I would've like if I was there to get content. I didn't, I didn't get that. And I should have because I did pay $40 to go in that bitch, so I should have taken advantage of it, but what else? Um, yeah, so that's it. Good night. I need to figure out what I'm wearing tonight, and I have no idea. <laughs> we have more than enough options, I just don't know which option to wear. 
So I guess what I first want to decide is, oh, let me grab that new H&M stuff. Hold on. All right, so as far as weather goes tonight, the weather is going to be in the 60s. So it's not freezing, but it's not hot. But I don't need like a big jacket. Excuse my shorts and briefs, child. This still not certain on. But we got it. Okay, I feel like this is the perfect skirt to wear on a like 60 degree evening. And not 60 degrees, it's gonna be like 60, let me see the exact degreeage. Hold on. Okay, by the time we go out tonight, okay, yes, it is gonna be in fact 60 degrees. Let me tell my homegirl to bring my leather jacket. So, we got, we got this skirt and for the top. See, before I move on to the top, I need to figure out what shoes I would wear with this, right? Like, what shoes? The top, we could figure out a top, but it's what shoes do I want at the bottom of this? And I don't think I want a sneaker. This is giving I just got off work. Isn't this giving I just got, got off work? And then, what, well, first I'm gone. Or like, what if I had just a really good long sleeve shirt? Cause I do got some long sleeve shirt, but still it's like, what's the shoe? <laughs> like it all stops at the shoe. I don't feel like, I don't have the shoes of my dreams. That's me, that's me. I don't have the shoes of my dreams, you know, like the shoes that I think I would wanna wear with certain outfits, I don't own them. I know that, you know, I know that. So, I'm working with what I got. Have you ever heard of working with what you got, bitch? Let me go and check my shoes real quick, cause I can't think. Hold on. If we were on some real deal, you feels, and I'm wearing this skirt. Like, I have summertime shoes, it's the wintertime shoes. I could pull a loafer out, but it's like, a loafer, girl. I kind of, <laughs> I can't. And then it's like, am I overdoing my boots? Here's the thing, I don't think I want to wear my, but no, who gives a shit? I was going to say, I don't think I want, oh, so I have bought these. Cute dupes of this one brand. Bought these online. Bitch, why are they like, and this is my size. They are like three sizes too small. You have to, I started reading the reviews. They were like, order three sizes up. This literally looks like a child's shoe on my foot. My foot is hanging off the back. Like, hanging off the back. But this would be a great shoe to wear tonight. But I can't. But yeah, like in a perfect world, I would wear a cute top and I'd wear this with that skirt. But no, I could wear these dunks. I just don't want it. I just don't want it. I gotta go to a full length mirror. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Are you the type of person who like, if all your friends are wearing sneakers and it's like, okay, I'll wear sneakers. Or are you like, I'm gonna wear what I wanna wear. By nature, I'm one of those like, okay, what are all my friends wearing? I'll match the vibe. I don't know, I feel like that's kind of like girl code. But as I get older, I'm more of the mind of just like, everybody should wear whatever they wanna wear. Like whatever mood you're in, wear that. If you wanna wear heels and shit, you should wear that. I'm no longer like, I'm not gonna wear this cause everybody's wearing. No, I think we should all just wear whatever we want to wear that day. Whatever your mood is, whatever might make you feel better if you dress like, like whatever. But uh, I think ultimately what it boils down to is just like dressing for the occasion. And most times, especially here, the, the occasion does not call for an all out, you know, pull out my best. Not in Atlanta. Okay, let me see, hold on. Let's see about the cream boots. best so far. Let me put both on. Alright, that's very cute. Definitely needed the boot. I gotta think about a top. So I'm gonna go with the shoots boots with this gray skirt. 
All right, we're making some traction here. I love that. I quite literally love that. I know I wanna wear something cropped. That's the thing. I def wanna wear something cropped, so. I don't know, I might do this. I wish I had like a really cool brooch to put on this. Like I'd wear this top if I had a bag that matched my shoes, but I don't have a bag that matches my shoes. So like my top kind of has to be on the neutral side, or on the cooler side. And by cool, I mean like in colors and tones for it to make sense to me. But so far I do not think I'll be wearing a jacket giving no jacket tonight just just vibes why did i buy this like why did i buy this this is horrible oh i could go this route it's a different cut off top i could go this route i just feel like this color is accepted in that in that scheme but yeah either of these will work i do have some crop sweaters I stole this from an old boyfriend. I feel like this is his shape too. Like this is what this nigga looked like. Like he was shaped like this off the hanger. He had the same shape. Like low key it looks like he's standing right in front of me. <laughs> I also got this cream v-neck that could also go. So it's just about what's gonna look the cutest on, you know? It's like, what about when we put it on? Like, what's gonna look cute then? You know? Like, we could talk all night, but what's gonna look cute when it's time? Uh, I also have this little number, like if I wanted to bag that up. Actually, I'm not too certain about that one, but yeah, girl, we got action. So now what I can do is relax, relate, release, and go for a walk, cause I'm not gonna start getting ready until like six. It's noon. What time did I get up? Girl, don't talk about it. Now I am hungry. <laughs> I am gonna watch Love is Blind, but I'm gonna do it again on TikTok Live. Um, because that was a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed that. I'm on the good season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills now. I'm on season five. This is when um, Kim tells that lady, she tells Eileen, so this is something you beast. And the lady says, I bet you what. No, she says, how dare you. <laughs> Hell of like
I love podcasts. I don't think I like group podcasts because unfortunately, or like the thing about the thing about podcasts is number one, that's normally what I'm listening to. Um, refilling my jar of chocolate. Before I finish my thought, another thing I'm like gonna take it easy on myself on is my need to have some sweets in the house. Bitch, I bleed every month. Okay, my hormones are up and fucking down and my body is literally losing blood every month. I'm eating some shit, okay? I don't care what the doctors say, I don't care what the blogs say. That's my mama. <laughs> okay, I did just buy some, what are these called? Winter Frost Pine Berries. This is some shit I would normally leave at the store but for whatever reason today they caught my eye so pop some shit that i feel like the man made but let's taste it and see girl oh oh wait you know when you haven't eaten anything all day god damn i felt that shit in my jaw very juicy but this ain't nothing but a strawberry okay nothing but a strawberry that pissed me off Cause these cost the same amount as the strawberries, but you get half the amount. Ooh, refreshing. That's refreshing. But God damn. Yeah. So I did end up going out for a walk because I started feeling guilty. It's 70 degrees out, summertime. And uh, my homeboy called me at work, he's at work. And I was just like, I've been sitting on the couch all day just watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I said, you know what? How about I just get up, take a walk and yeah, I feel feel good just moving my body. I've been sending some emails, you know. I sent one email and I was like, whoo, like, I am a hardworking woman, okay? But we, one email turned into two, turned into three. So it's like, I'm in there, I'm doing a damn thing, okay? I'm gonna put my camera on the charger because I'm gonna start getting ready in two hours, or really in one hour, it's 4.40. So I need to let my battery charge it's saying it's about to die which is really annoying anyway i'm gonna let that charge i'll see y'all in a few bye I just want a big baby with a sweet man underneath me while I ride him like a pony and I call him Tommy. Ooh, I'm looking. What is it? R O U G H. Hey. He looking rough and stuff with my afro puffs. Hey, I'm gonna have to keep my arms down. <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna have to keep my arms down. <laughs> That's what you not getting. If I put the arm up, you feel me? I would like to get to know if you could be the kind of girl that you could be down for.
Yo, hear me out. Everybody that I got to nasty up on them nasty up. Fix things, speak things, repeat. When I'm right then, can you see me in a cleanest? Do us on the rack in a day for King Gilles, G.G. So here's my thing, all right? Even on the chill nights, you know, even on my chill nights, girl, if I could pay to keep these niggas off me, I would. I ain't getting. Tonight's theme was, I'm gonna stare at you until you stare back. And when you do look in my direction, if you look at me for a millisecond, I will pursue you. Okay, fine. Pursue away. They come over. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Wanna talk to you. They come over and they say things like, I'm gonna give you a full thing. So first of all, I went to an event for a show called BMF. And which I like BMF, okay? I watch BMF. I think BMF is good. I, I'm enjoying BMF, okay? The new season isn't out yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Girl, I saw this man like trailing around, like he was at one angle, then he went from another angle. He over here, he up, but always like had his eyes on me. I'm like, he gonna make his way over here at some point. So, finally, <laughs> he finds his way over by where we're standing. And he says to me, you here with somebody? Mind you. He had to break mid conversation I was having with my friends and it was four of us. So it's like, am I with somebody uh, besides the people that you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Cut through to get to me. Um, so he's like, you with somebody? I said, yeah. Then he says, oh, well, I mean, I know you with your friends, but like, are you with somebody from the cast? At first I didn't hear what he said. So I was like, pardon? He was like, are you with somebody from the cast? And I said, no. He said, oh, cause I'm a part of the cast. Okay. Baby, if you wanted me to know you was part of the cast, all you had to do was say I'm part of the cast. He ain't had to ask me about about who is somebody from the cast or not. Like, it did not take all that. Hold on, we need some light. So, Girl, he's talking about some, I'm part of the cast, so I didn't want to talk to you if you was we here with somebody from the cast. There are a few things. Why is the assumption that I'm with someone from the cast and not a part of the cast myself? Why is it, why is it you must be here with somebody? How about I'm more, I'm important enough to be here just on my own accord? How about that? I'm not here with nobody. Ugh. And so I'm just like, and the thing is, is that I know what type of women he's used to getting. He's an attractive guy, but Yuck, like, so then he goes to say, um, what did he say? After I said, I'm not a part of the cast, he's like, okay, good, yeah, cause you know, you were here with somebody from the cast and I wasn't gonna talk to you. That gets no response out of me. I'm just like, blink, blink, blink. He's like, so do you like the show? I said, yeah, I do. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Then he goes, so uh, you from here? Or he, he said, where, you know, he said, you from here? I said, yeah, I'm from here. He said, oh wow, so like you, you from here? I said, yeah. He's like, I'm scared of you. <laughs> and started like, he, he, and a ha, ha, and like a real. <laughs> and it's just like, I said, no reason to be scared. And he was like, um, 
so uh what hobbies are you into my, my camera battery about to die is killing me um he was like what hobbies are you into and i was just immediately like oh brother like it's music blasting this niggas walking from here to there it's hella women it's just like it's a whole full-fledged party i personally don't love a let me get to know you type conversation in a club like setting like let's not you know get my number get my instagram did you know one or the other or both whatever so he asked me that and i said you know that's not a conversation i really want to have right now in this setting and he was like oh i love that you know let's have it in a different place he pulls out his phone like to pull to get my number i said uh pull up instagram <laughs> And so then he gets my Instagram, pulls up my Instagram. He's like, you famous. Please. It's 2024. You can have 100,000 plus followers for having all 32 teeth at this stage in the game. Like that ain't, you know what I'm saying? That ain't nothing to be shouting from the mouth. It's like, what the, you bur Like, that don't mean nothing at all. Everybody knows that. Please. So it was just like, you know. Why do you gotta be so corny? But yeah, what can you do? Anywho, I had a good time. I did see Meech. Meech was there. I said, Meech, you need to back up off that peach syrup. I don't know what you've been drinking, but he was bloated. Or maybe he dealing with health issues, I don't know. It could be something else. But he was definitely bloated. I said, oh. But um, yeah. Anyway, tomorrow, my friend is doing karaoke for her birthday. So we're gonna do that. And um, yeah. So girls, I will see you tomorrow. All in all, I had a great night. Anytime I do something with my friends, regardless of like what else is going on, like this shit that we ain't got no control over, um, I'll be having a good night, period. It's just, I enjoy myself because I'm around people who I like and we can laugh and shit. Oh, we got. Where did I put my bag? No. I think I left my, hold on. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> I'm gonna be so sad. We got some memorabilia. Cute. Love that. So yeah. So the enough up front. They cute. I said cute. You know, I never got one of those airbrush shirts with my name on it. I, I'm probably gonna do that at some at some point. Cause I always win one. So anyways, bye girls. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm about to try this. Sure I don't wanna see where I wanna cut it. I know I wanna cut it. That's what we're gonna do. There's little pieces of feather on it from the other part of my outfit. So the thing is, is that the outfit that I have in mind with this is Death Given that so Raven is Death Given costume. Which, I don't want to give costume. Okay, I know I want to cut it to right around here. I'll give it a little snip so I know where to start. Sometimes, whenever I say that's where I want it, I go a little bit lower. Just in case, you know what I'm saying? I lay it flat. I cut up a lot of my shirts, like, into midriffs. Like, I probably would have did it a little lower. That's okay. Ain't no rhyme, ain't no reason. Cause the thing is, is that it's gonna curl under like this eventually. And so it's just like, it, it really doesn't matter. You just wanna try to get it as straight as possible. Now I'm gonna try it on. And I still think I might turn it into a muscle shirt, just not today. I'm not trying to get a costume. So I'm gonna take this as a just in case, as a maybe, but not certain on that. Def not certain. Either way, I'll show you what the end result looks like. Like, ah. I want you to hold me. I look like you got to be like an OG. And I. Come on, I'll trust this shit. Okay. So let me show you what's happening here. How does the mess girl fuck you? Don't give me that. Okay, so. I've got on a jumper that I normally wear like when I'm having male company because it's just like, it's a sneak attack. Like it looks like, oh, just a little jumper, just a little jumper and it's like, pow, you know what I'm saying? Like you see that and it's like, wait a minute, hold up. You know, so it's that. I have on my That So Raven, um, what would you call this? 
whatever the hell. Decided to wear my A cap because my friend whose birthday this is, she actually designed this hat. So I was like, okay, I have to throw this on and then just take this bag. Oh, and I'm wearing my Revolve boots again. Shout out to getting all the wears in. Like, but shout out to getting all the wears in. Like, I'm making good use of these boots. They are getting worn, sweetie. Look at that. And yes, the hat will be staying just the tip of my hair because I don't need to mess my hair up because after this karaoke spot, I'm going to another spot that's also doing like a 2000 thing. So I was like, Okay, so I just need to fill my purse up with my things. I can give you one tip. When you go out, always, always, always take with you a little roll-on or a little sample perfume. You never know when you need to be the best smelling bitch in the room. Everybody perfume gonna go away at some point, but yours won't. So always take a little something to give yourself some light touch-ups. So then when you're walking past people, it's like, oof, who is that? That's one of my claim to fame, girl. I'm trying to tell you something. Okay, don't act like I never told you something. I'll see you girls when I get back home. Bye. I forgot about a very important piece of my outfit. Diva always brings her own mic. So it's giving 2002 video of and Batty, paying homage to my homegirl, whose birthday it is that we're celebrating, and a big fat ass. I'll see you girls later. Ta da! <laughs> Yo, is this pollen or some kind of allergy reaction I'm having right now? Is any indication of what the summer or spring is gonna be like? I'm concerned. I ain't never, I have never dealt with this type of like allergy like this. I have, you know, if I'm like in a pollinated area, like where you can see the pollen, then boom, I get it. Yes, eyes watering, sneezing, nose, you know, acting funny, yes. But like, there is no visible pollen unless that like haze that I see sometimes is pollen. Wonder if that's pollen. I don't know, but every time I go outside, y'all, my nose is feeling funny, like sniffly. Um, my eyes are all watering up. I'm sneezing. It's like full on allergy. Anyway, let's get on to good stuff. Girl, I'm minding my own business. Saw them girls outside. Saw them girls outside. Had to give me a few of them. Had to give me a few of them. Now, the only reason why I got one thing of thin mint, because I feel like I need to explain myself, because I have not seen Girl Scouts in a minute, like posted up, you know, Girl Scout cookies, girl, like the whole night. I haven't seen that shit in years. So I really took advantage and got me four boxes. I would have got two boxes of thin mints, but I literally just bought like the Whole Foods version of Thin Mint. So I'm just like, I don't need two boxes of these. I probably am gonna regret that decision. Um, I got these because I tried these recently actually. One of my homeboys, his niece, she is a Girl Scout and so he had these and they were really good. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get these just to switch it up. And then my all time fave, Samoa's. Like this is a Samoa household. And if you have taste, you also enjoy the smoke. I literally just ran to the store because I didn't have any water. Tonight I'm doing a live watch and reaction situation to Love is Live on TikTok. I'm excited. I'm very excited for that. Oh, another great come up today. Look at this cute ass bag that I found in TJ Maxx. One thing about it. One thing about it, that is a cute ass bag. I said, wait a minute, this is too cute. Never don't look, you know what I'm saying? Always look, cause you never know what you're gonna find. So I like this, a little pleather, a little vegan leather. 
situation. Love that. Very cute. Very, very cute. And I got these two sunscreen products. Probably didn't need any of them. CC cream, so it's kind of like a foundation almost. I put it on my hand and it blended in with my hand, so we'll see. And then this is just like something I can put in my little, um, my little pouch when I'm going on my walks. I just need to spray myself with sunscreen. Sunscreen only lasts for like, some sunscreens will last like up to 80 minutes. But like, I'll be outside. So I'm just like, let me make sure I'm doing what I need to do. I'm going to edit until it's time for me to go live. Just to get a crack at it. Tomorrow I'll also be editing. Good morning, I'm gonna show you my morning face routine. So first things first, one pump of this face wash from Free and True. One full pump. So I rub that onto my dry skin first. This is a really moisturizing face wash, so this will feel really nice. Every time I use these products, it feels like I'm getting a facial. Now, I'm gonna emulsify it by using some water. And that'll give you a little bit of suds, not really. This is not the type of face wash that sets up. Now, a paper towel to dry off. I literally just get a paper towel from the kitchen, rip it in half, and use that. Much cheaper than anything else. And does the same thing. Okay, I like to make sure my skin is completely dry. The next thing I put on is this essence. Next thing I put on is this essence. I shake it up so it gets milky. Give myself a little And that also feels very moisturizing because it's the consistency, like you saw, it was really like wet, but it has like an oil consistency, like a light oil. Next is the serum. I'm just gonna do a little bit of the serum, like a half pump. Excuse my dirty mirror. Okay, <clears throat> half pump of the serum. And that's really just to prep for our next product. And that serum is a hyaluronic acid situation. This is really good for like fighting wrinkles, fighting fine lines, and just like putting moisture into the skin, like a heavy amount. Now this is the daytime standout. This is the vitamin C product that I'm using. And I'm gonna do one pump. It suggests two to three pumps, but that is a lot of product just in one pump. So I just do one clean pump I love the smell of this. It has kind of like a citrusy smell. And this brand uses all natural everything. So it's not a synthetic fragrance. So I don't think this is something that will aggravate your skin. I stay away from stuff like that because my skin is really sensitive. I haven't had any breakouts since I started using this product. Actually, my skin looks and feels a lot better since using this stuff. And yeah. So after this kind of dries down a little bit, and like you should be working everything on your neck, okay. After this dries down, I'm gonna put a little bit of the Skin Glass Moisturizer on. Put on a little bit of my Sephora lip mask that I like. I do let this concoction marinate for like a cool 10 to 15, and then I'll put on a little bit of moisturizer and then my sunscreen, and that's it. Not my ankles popping, god damn. Let's discuss love is blind. Bitch. First of all, what the fuck? So there's gonna be some spoilers in here if you haven't seen uh, the most recent episode. 
episodes seven through nine. So this was an interesting string of episodes because in it, I saw so much shit, okay? So let's start off with the one that was getting on my nerves the most, Kenneth and Brittany. Kenneth, black guy, he wear his hair in twists and he paired up with a white girl. Knew she was white when they was in the pods, knew she was white when they first revealed each other, knew she was white when they got to that vacation spot. Now what happened was, there's a certain point in the vacation where all the couples meet one another and he met AD, the black girl. The only black girl that's on the show. And AD asked him some questions about raising black children with this white woman and whether or not he knew she was gonna be ready for that. Personally, I think AD was out of line asking the type of question because one, no, he don't know. Do you ever know? People can tell you something all night long. That don't mean he knows shit. He ain't gonna know till he know. But another thing is, who gives a damn girl? You don't know this Negro? And you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like there was a little bit of a stirring of the pot, but whatever. We'll get to AD in a second. Kenneth, from that point on, started being very cold to Britney. Now, here's the thing about Britney. I like Britney. Britney, out of all of the girls there, has been the only one who I felt like hasn't violated. She don't act a fool. She's not annoying. She's honest. She shares her feelings in a in a way that's gentle and not in a naggy way. Like she's she's been the most cool out of all the girls. And so watching this whole thing break down kind of made me feel bad for her because I'm like, damn, she deserves better than this. So let me tell you what happens. Kenneth start getting in his head about whether or not this girl is going to be right for his family. He starts bringing up his family like my family's going to want to know, you know, you know, who is this person and is she good for me? I, 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 and it's like, okay, I'm sure her family's going to want to know if you're good for her. Like, you know, whatever. Then he just starts treating her funny. So in the beginning, he was hella giddy and like dee -dee -dee -dee, teasing from ear to ear, just having a blast. Um, was in the bed like, so. I want to start something off from here on out when we go to bed i want us to you know talk about today we don't go to sleep mad we debrief the whole day every night every night we do this that's what he told her in that bed laid up with his with his scarf on and his twist poking out and she was like okay okay we can do that she's you know going with it this negro the first opportunity he could invalidate her feelings and dismiss what the fuck she was talking about, that's what the fuck he did. She told him, yo, you know, I know you noticed that I really like physical touch. Like, what's your love language? She asked him that, then she's like, you know, I like physical touch so much, you could, you could touch me a little bit more. Like, you know, and he was like, oh, I felt like I was smothering you, which is crazy because we had just watched him on the boat, literally not talking to her at all until he saw some dolphins jumping out the water. He's like, oh my God, dolphins, I love dolphins. So it's like, you have not said a word to her. She even made a joke. She was like, oh my God, let's get more dolphins, please. If this is what, if this is what it's gonna take for you to like start speaking, like more dolphins, more dolphins. And so, Girl, when she told him about the physical touch, he told my son, well, I ain't never heard that before. You, you know, I've never been told that I, you know, that I'm not good with physical touch. She didn't say that you weren't good. She said that you can give her more. She, she didn't say you wasn't doing it at all. She said you could give it to her more. That's what she was saying. Okay, so that was the first time where I was like, Kenneth. That and the silent treatment, right? So then, girl, they moving into their house together, right? They got a little townhouse. And she's unpacking and she's so excited as any girl would. Like, boom, this is gonna be our home together. This is the first day of us moving into this home together. So she's unpacking and she's, you know, asking him like, what side of the closet do you want? What side of the bathroom do you want? You know, just being a giddy girl. This fool is on the phone, whole time, just texting not looking up, not really engaging. She asked me a question, he'd be like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, 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 you can, yeah, that's cool. Sitting on the bed, slouched up, hips poking. I said, okay, now this show strike two. Actually, this show strike three, cause now he pissing me off. And I hate when I'm hella giddy, giddy, bubbly, bubbly, and somebody being dry as shit. No, you need to crack a smile before I get pissed off for real. 
So she don't even say nothing. She just let him do what he do. She does say to him like, the hustle never stops, huh? And he was like, gotta get, gotta get, you know, my business in order, gotta get my this. Bitch, you're a principal. You are not James St. Patrick. There is not that much attention that you need to give that phone right now. Y'all will be okay, like, like it'll be okay. I thought that was so annoying, it's not even funny. Like, I hate when somebody makes their shit more important than it is, and I'm not saying that his job isn't important. What I'm saying is, he was making it more important than it actually is, period. Like, bitch, please, you could take 10 to 15 minutes to unpack with this girl, or at the very least, engage with this woman while she's doing this, and you see how excited she is. Like, the way he lined himself up was like, he knew it all. Like, he was using a lot of therapy talk, a lot of talk that makes it seem like he knows what the fuck going on inside and outside the body, only for him to show that he lacks awareness and lacks emotional maturity. Yuck. So, boom. She leaves him alone. Again, more points for Britney because Britney was really showing patience and maturity because she ultimately wanted things to work with her and Kenneth, period. She took this very seriously, so she wasn't on his neck about nothing. Girl, so, so the next time we see them, they are looking at each other's places, right? So he takes her to, her, to his spot, and I don't think we ever see her take him to her spot, but we're in their, his house right now. And they're sitting on the couch and he gets back on his phone while she's talking. And he like gets off his phone. Mind you, his, he took his twist down. So I'm already tapped out. Like, you get, let me tell you something. One thing about me, and I said this before, I don't want to date no nigga in they long hair era. I don't like it. Don't like the look, won't like the look. I don't give a damn. I don't give a fuck. I just, that's me. We ain't going to be fighting for hair ties. There'd be no reason why me and you got the same damn hair do. No. So, girl, he gonna ask her, so, you know, like checking in with her, like, so how are you feeling? How are you da 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 da? And she keeps it real, like, you know, I feel like you have been distant. I feel like you haven't been talking to me. I feel like, and she gave an example from the first night that they spent together in that morning when she woke up and how she was so excited and giddy and was just like, good morning. And he was just like, hey, and like roll back over. And so she had brought that up, right? This is what he gonna say. You be, yeah, but you're not gonna every morning be like that. You're not gonna be like that every time. So you have to give me grace, huh? See, this is where the Grace Warriors piss me off. This is where the Give Me Grace Warriors piss me off. Because she's giving you grace. We witnessed her giving you grace. There is many a time she could have said something to your ass, and deservingly so, and she did not. This is not a moment where you need grace. This is a moment where you hear what she's saying, and you say, you know what? And, and you just respect her feelings. Now, if you have a reason for why you were like that, share that. But you don't get to turn it into a because well you're not always gonna be you don't know what the fuck she always gonna be like all we know is how she's been you can't base your actions off of what you think somebody gonna be like in the future that ain't right you don't have no idea how this girl gonna be what if every morning she's getting to see your black ass you don't know i'm just like i i, I just I, I hate shit like that i hate when i see somebody really playing with somebody that's what the fuck he was doing playing and the, and the wild part is is that i think he thought he was really getting over i think when he was saying all that he thought we was gonna be like he's matured he's man he told her yeah yeah he right he gotta get no you look you look um rude and childish so then girl the girl and again britney was handling it like this is a man who I'm trying to work stuff out with. So she, you know, was affirming what he was saying and she kind of was still saying what she was saying. Like, you know, well, that's how I felt. And you know, ah, ah, ah. And he was like, you know, you gotta, you gotta, he just kept landing on that. You gotta give me grace bullshit. So boom, the next time we see them, he on that phone again, she in the kitchen. And she says to him like, listen, I feel like, and we learn at that point that they had made a decision not to be um, physical with one another, that they were gonna wait. 
but she said there is something to be said about that temptation and the desire and wanting to know that like you have to stop yourself we all know what she's talking about you want them to put it on your butt you want to feel something you know what i'm saying you want to cuddle and roll around a little slap and tickle if you will and so it's like okay when a, when a man hears that a, a man that wants to be with you you will hope he be like the last thing I want you to think is that I don't desire you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get in shape right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna change that because I do. I, I want you just as much as you want me. You know what this cloud said? Well, that's not true. I do I do desire you. But if you're letting me know you don't desire me, thank you. What? She says she feels like that's what's missing. He just completely turned it all on her, flipped it around on her, and was stale faced the whole time was stale faced the whole time and was just so cold and gross and the girl is like crying and he don't console her at all he gets back on his phone and then gets up and says let me give you a hug so you know there's no beef no beef just take your legs hips body ass upstairs get your shit and get the fuck out because what do we hear when he ended up leaving he called his homeboy and was like, hey bro, what you on? And said he was coming over there. Ooh, just go. Girl, if I could talk to Brittany, I tell her, you dodged a bullet. You don't want that issue. You do not want that issue. That man is not the one, trust me. I hate people like that. I hate when you tell somebody, you know, that you don't like something they did and they try to turn it around on you. Just completely, ooh, I hate, I hate that shit. Like. That's an easy way for me to talk about your ass. <laughs> like one thing about me, I'ma talk about you. Yeah, you gonna get talked about. Cause that's ugly. You got no business treating her like that. Girl ain't been nothing but nice to you. So yeah, that's, and, and basically he left. That's it. Oh, I don't know if I said that. Yeah, he was like, you know, this won't work out. This isn't gonna work out, you know, clearly. You know, because you don't desire me. Big putting it on her. And it's like, boy, you wanted to do this the moment AD asked about them black kids. You have all this internalized guilt about choosing a white girl. Meanwhile, it's bullshit because you been knew she was white. You didn't have an issue with it until a black person said something to you about it, about her being white. Now all of a sudden you got all these questions. Now all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? You acting like this, like you're not even real with it. It'd be one thing if you genuinely had these questions and had these reservations, but this is coming off the strength of what somebody else said to you. Like, ugh, you ugly as shit. Hate that shit. I want them to do a Love is Blind exclusively with black people. That would be, that. I mean, that would be TV gold. Okay, I do need to clean up while I'm chitting and chatting with y'all. So hold on real quick. The thing about AD and Clay is that bottom line, neither one of them are ready to be married. And so when we're having conversations about this couple, that needs to be like the preface to it. It's just like, neither one of them are actually ready for marriage. And I guess the question could be asked is like, what does ready for marriage look like? And I just think it's a, a willingness to compromise you know, showing patience, even when it's uncomfortable sometimes, giving folks the benefit of the doubt, like shit like that. Because marriage is gonna have its ups and downs and I feel like healthy marriages last because you're with someone who's committed to creating a solution with you and who's also practicing a lot of patience and understanding like this is not someone who's trying to i don't know create conflict and like you know shit like that like obviously there are marriages and relationships that are like that but i don't think i would i don't would i wouldn't consider those healthy relationships when ad and clay were talking in the pods clay gave me the biggest icks 
and a lot of red flags. How he reacted when she was sharing with him the you know incident she had with the thick neck white guy who had told her the same thing he told another girl. And he just kind of like started lashing out and all of that. I was like, ugh, what a yuck moment, you know? It just showed how much of Clay's ego was involved in how he moves, you feel me? And it was very yuck, right? We all collectively were just like, look, when we saw that part. But since they've been married, AD's been the one that's kind of been giving me the ugh, because I don't think she really likes this man. The way she looks at him, she be looking at him like, all I see is them lashes opening up. She be looking at him like she don't like him. She's really stale. She fishes a lot for compliments and she does it by complimenting him and I can tell that she is looking for him to say the thing to her. Like she'll be like, you're so handsome. And he just says, thank you. He never returns the compliment. And that's a reflection of his ego. That, that's a reflection of him not having that awareness to know like I should be complimenting my woman. And he does it from time to time, but it's when AD is literally putting it all out there. Like when she took that bathing suit off and all of that, like then he'll give her, I mean when she uh, took her robe down and she was in her bathing suit and she's like saying stuff, that's when he'll like kind of say something to her, but I haven't seen him really dope on her. It's always him kind of treating it like he's the prize. And he probably really does believe that, which as a woman, baby, you don't want the man that thinks he's the prize. You're gonna be living in a world of hurt, okay? That is not the life. I dated the guy that thought he was the prize. Bitch found out he was not the prize, okay? One thing about me, the man that I'm with has to know that I am the superstar. And it doesn't mean he's not a superstar. And I'm not actually saying like I'm a superstar. What I'm saying is he has to treat me like his whole sole purpose is to support me and, and put me up and to clap for me and to shout me out and to hold me on his shoulders. And you know what I'm saying? This, that, and the third. Knowing that he's gonna get that same type of love and support and admiration from me. Um, and I just think, yeah, niggas ain't got no game no more. So they don't even know how to do that shit properly so then they can actually get that type of shit. So, boom, girl. AD and Clay's situation at this point is basically Clay got 50 11 jobs. I think he like owns properties and has to travel from here and there within the city. And instead of coming back to their shared apartment, he just stays at his house, which is crazy because y'all have a short amount of time to decide if y'all want to be married. And you're not using this time to actually be together. This is why I say motherfuckers ain't ready for marriage because you technically still don't know this girl like that. And you're not using the time that you've been given to know for sure whether or not you want to get married. I would be with this motherfucker every single day if I was on this show because I would really want to know do I want to do this? You know what I'm saying? And so the fact that he's not going home and he's staying at his house, to me, that don't make no sense. And when they were talking about this, they were having this conversation in front of his mom and sister. And his mom gave some advice about how they need to compromise and this, that, and third. And I just don't think AD is gonna be super receptive to that, knowing what Clay shared with her about how she was getting cheated on for uh, you know, a majority of her relationship. Clay's mom was married to his dad for 23 years, and Clay shared that his dad was a serial cheater and used to take Clay on his escapades with him. That's crazy. So Clay also shared that he didn't wanna disappoint AD. And in that moment, AD internalized it and was just, she felt a way about him saying that. And I didn't think that was fair. I felt like this was him sharing how he feels. And he wasn't saying he's gonna disappoint you. He didn't say he wants to disappoint you. He didn't say he thinks he's gonna disappoint you. He says he doesn't want to. And because of you know experiences that we've had or our own biases or our own interpretations of what shit means, it turned into a whole thing where she was like, that just came out of nowhere. That just, and it's like, 
nothing comes out of nowhere at this stage in the game. You all literally have known each other for a week at this point and have spent the last three days together on this vacation and he's just letting you know you know this is the day before y'all go back home that he does not want to disappoint you if anything that would be like a moment of vulnerability that i would appreciate because he's not someone who she has felt like has shared with her how he feels at all times and she just had that conversation with another castmate. One of the guys had, was talking to her and randomly said like, he's really introspective and he gets in his head sometimes and he'll just stop talking. She was like, wow, that's really affirming. Like I need to hear that. And so it's like, you know this about your man. So why would you, I don't know. I just thought that was ugly. So I'm not saying I'm team Clay or anything like that. I'm just saying both of them have shown me signs of not being ready for this big thing that they signed up for. Okay, so next, Megan Fox and Jimmy. <laughs> so Chelsea, bottom line, gets on my nerves. Can't stand Chelsea. I told y'all in the last vlog, Chelsea is insufferable. Will find a reason to be upset about something. You could be having the best day ever and she'll be like, except remember two years ago when you said that, no girl, why are you bringing that up? Why, why? She brings shit up when it's not necessary. They could, and I hate people like that. It's like, we go through something, we apologize, we move forward, only for you to rehash it whenever you're feeling like you're questioning stuff. Don't bring up old shit, old wounds. You know, she never allows things to just heal and move forward. It's always her like rehashing something. Like, bitch, do you want this shit to work? Cause why the hell you keep bringing up this shit? And then she brings it up in front of people. This is my issue with Chelsea and my issue with people who do this, period. You don't do that to your people. You don't bring up grievances that y'all have had, private conversations that y'all have had, or situations where it makes the other person not look that great in front of people. That, that to me is like, oh, you don't really fuck with this person or you don't give a fuck about how they look. You want, you want people to feel sorry for you. That's why you're doing this. Because why would you tell your homegirls that he hasn't kissed me all day and he saw the other girl who he liked he saw her page today you know stirring all this up right before they meet him okay then they meet him he has nothing but nice things to say about your friends later on that night they're kind of like debriefing the day and she's like being her naggy, needy self, talking about some, I, you know, I just feel like, you know, you, you don't know, like, what's going on? Like, you didn't kiss me today. And he's like, I did kiss you today. He gave very specific moments where he kissed her. Like, I kissed you in the bathroom before I left. I kissed you right here before your friends got here. Like, I kissed you. And so she was like, yeah, well, like, you didn't say I love you. Now it's something else. First I didn't kiss you, now I didn't say I love you. So then he's like, yo, and I, you can see it like it, it went down because he was on a high, it was good. They were laughing, they were giggling. She got on the velvet shirt. Everything was fine, right? Besides that shirt. And here she go bringing the mood down because I think she's one of those people that can't accept that everything's good. She is addicted to conflict and addicted to whining and being a victim and someone having to make her feel better and like rub her back like she constantly needs that type of interaction that's what it seems like that's how it comes off and so he says to her like yo i feel like you've been a little clingy that was the worst thing she could have heard because you know what that does that fulfills her vision of what he thinks about her anyway she is severely insecure and she projects this insecurity by creating this conflict with him unnecessarily so you know boom in the same way that kenneth wanted britney to dump him so it could be off his hands and he could say she left me she said she don't desire me even though he had set it up so then she would want to leave because who the fuck would want to be with somebody who don't speak don't touch me always on their phone not engaged with me acting this thing like you set it up this way so here she go being fucking annoying as shit and then 
feels insulted and doesn't understand why he's calling her clingy. What the fuck do you mean? Every single day, every time we see you on the screen, you're asking him, does he really like you? Does he really love you? Are you happy with your decision? What do you think about me? Are you sure? Are you constantly? That shit is a drag. And so when he said she was clingy, I wanted to give him a standing ovation. Like, yes, let's shake this shit up because at the end of the day, she is being fucking clingy and you done tried to be nice and appease her and she's still not, she's not getting it. So yes, it's time for us to like, let it be known what time it is and what time it's not. Tells her she's clingy, right? I, I could tell she was about to rip that velvet shirt off, Hulk style. She got pissed clingy, fucking clingy. That's what you're gonna say to me? You think I'm fucking clingy? How? I just wanna say, bitch, how about this? This time, I'm not talking that. Like, we got a list, there's a laundry list of moments where you've been clingy, huh? Don't ask nobody how, because we can give you the how. So, she starts getting mad. She's like, I don't wanna hear from you right now. Like, he's trying to talk to her. She's like, I'm not done talking. You know, she starts acting a fool. Um, being rude and just being yuck. So he's just taking it. And then he's just like, <laughs> this, this is where he said something he shouldn't have said. He said, uh, <laughs> like, even today, like, you know, you, oh, she was like, I'm fucking clingy. Was I clingy when I fucking cooked you this and cooked you that and had sex with you before so and so? And he was like, well, that was your idea to have sex. We could back up off that as well. Now you're gonna tell her she ain't got good coochie. Uh uh. Now, now you took it too far, Jimmy. I said, Jimmy, you know good and well. I call him Beetlejuice, cause he look like Beetlejuice me. I said, Beetlejuice, you know good and well. You do not need to, why would you say this to this girl? Cause now, when I tell you, she gonna think about that for the rest of her damn life, that he don't wanna have sex with her. But she's gonna bring it up all the time. And what does she do? Brings it up all the time. She meets his friends because they end up, he, go, he ends up spending the night at his, at his own house that night. And then they end up rewinking in the morning. They apologize, make up, whatever. So this is the day where she's going to meet his homegirls, two of his homegirls. And what does she do? She brings that whole argument up. Brings the whole argument up in front of his homegirls, tells them exactly what he said about being clingy and also about not wanting to have sex and it's like you are the worst she's just the worst I, like she's the worst so my prediction for them two I don't know like the thing is, is that Jimmy actually gives me the the idea that he actually likes this girl and she be acting so insecure and it really doesn't have anything to do with Jimmy. It has everything to do with Jess, the girl who he was talking to and that he almost proposed to. She's just in her head about that. And it's like, get over it, girl, get over it. He chose you, so it's time to move forward. And he told you that he's happy with his decision. You gotta believe what he said and move forward. If he gives you a reason not to believe it, then address it. But until then, back up off it. You gonna make, you gonna push him to that other bitch. So, Boom, let's get to Laura and Jeremy. So Jeremy, I haven't liked him from the jump. He's just one of those white guys that play too much. Like I hate a guy that don't know when to quit. You know what I'm saying? Like stop playing, cause now I'm, now I'm annoyed, right? And also you're becoming ugly to me. So it's like, stop. So he don't know when to stop. Boom. Laura, she's also annoying. Laura, just gives, I like to be in charge, I'm used to being in charge, and she doesn't, I don't think she respects Jeremy. She doesn't give that. She kind of treats him like he's a joke. And she be nitpicking off shit. I don't like that either. She's, she, from the beginning, before, even outside of the guys, when they was in the house, she just be overstepping. So, Laura's not my favorite. But in this situation, Laura done caught him up. There isn't much to talk about with Laura and Jimmy. I'm gonna be honest with you, like, I'm not that invested in their love story or the Strawberry Blonde and the Puerto Rican girl. I can't tell you that. I, well, I can't, we'll talk about them. But I be skipping their parts, I'm gonna be honest with you. So, as far as Laura and Jeremy, Jeremy um, had connected with another girl in the pods and basically, long story short, decided to meet the girl. And because when they are on that vacation, they don't have their phones. 
Once they go home from the vacation, they get their phones back. And the producers know what they're doing, you know what I'm saying? So they get their phones back when they go back home. And the girl that he had connected with had DM'd him. And instead of him not responding, he hearted what she said. And basically what she was saying in the message was like, if you change your mind, if there's any chance of you reconnecting with me, I'm available. And he hearted it. And Laura was like, what the fuck? Which she has the right to be like, what the fuck? Cause yeah, bitch, what the fuck? Why is you hearting that? You should not respond to that at all because it, it insinuates that you have space for her or that that's something that you'll look into. You don't do that. So long story short, girl, they had shared their location with one another and Jeremy got caught up lying, talking about, you know, he was at one spot when he was someplace else and he was chitting and chatting with the girl. And so Laura's pissed. But the thing about it is like, Laura, you don't like this man no ways, girl. Just go ahead. Who gives a damn if he was there? Like, for real, who gives a damn? Because you know you don't even like him. That's my thing, like, can we not play this game? You don't like this man, so let's drop him completely. It's, it's literally pointless. We'll see what happens though. Now, as far as the Puerto Rican girl and the strawberry blonde guy, he's really annoying to me as well, like very annoying. He, I saw him say, guess what, chicken butt? Like, that's, that's the type of stuff that made me be like, cut the cameras. I want off the show, okay? I'm not, I can't do this. I ain't gonna be able to do it. Yeah, I, I would be done. But his issue is he don't want no kids right now and she's not on birth control. And he keeps bringing up the fact that every woman who he's been with has been on birth control so he hasn't had to worry about children. As if birth control is an automatic, this means we ain't gonna get pregnant. No, people be getting pregnant even though they on birth control. And so she tells him, like, I've never been on birth control. I don't want to take birth control because I don't want to disrupt my body. Fair. And he's just like, you know, I know, yeah, I'm not saying that you have to. I'm just saying, like, you know, I've never, you know, you know, I just, I, I don't want to. He just, you know, keeps bringing that up. And it's like, okay, why, to me, it's just like, why is this still a conversation? Put on a fucking condom and call it a day. Pull out. Like, how about that? How about pull out? Like, we're grown. What, what is this conversation? Her thing is, if we get pregnant, we get pregnant. And his thing is, ain't no if we get pregnant, I don't want to be pregnant. So, yeah, it's just, these are important conversations though to have because you see, she's, she's ready for something that he's not ready for at all. And that can make or break a relationship. So, we'll see where that goes. I'm still gonna be skipping the dialogue because I don't care. But yeah, I think I think when it comes to marriage, A D is gonna say no. Clay is gonna say yes. I think or they might both say yes. I get I get the vibe they're either both gonna say yes, or if anyone says no, it's going to be A D. That's what I think. With Jimmy and Chelsea, I think they're both gonna say yes. I don't think Laura and um, that man even make it to the altar. Laura and Jeremy, I don't think they make it to the altar. Who else? Oh, the strawberry blonde in them. I, I guess they'll say yes. Oh. Yeah, but hopefully the Netflix producers realize that there is a flaw in their system because it went from multiple people getting married. Well, I don't remember the first season, but I feel like there were more couples in the beginning and now it just kind of like dwindles down. This is better than last year. Last year there were literally only three couples and only two of them, actually only one of them got married. No, there were only two couples, right? Yeah, the bald head man and then the tall guy and the Spanish girl. So yeah, like, I think that was it. Yeah, so like there is a flaw in how they have it set up. So they do need to do something because right now, Something's messing it up. Okay girls, so today I am going to just be editing really. I'm about to eat. I went to Trader Joe's hoping to get more of these noodles, but they didn't have any more. So I'm glad I have this last pack. I'm gonna show you how I cook these after I charge my phone. I'm gonna make some chicken, I mean charge my camera.